are you? Good, how are you, Susie? Good. Just so that we can get to know you a little bit better, can you tell us about how you immigrated to the United States at a young age and how this, you know, has shaped you into the person you are today? So my family and I immigrated to the U.S. when I was nine years old. We moved to California. At the time, my parents and I, my whole family didn't speak English at all. And also my mom was diagnosed with thyroid disease during that time. And so we struggled a lot financially. We moved to America, so we didn't have any money. But whatever money we had, we used it to you know, buy the plane ticket, saved it to find a place to live. So we didn't really have the financial budget to get my mom the treatment that she needed. So we had to really rely on the community to help us, rely on nonprofit organizations to kind of help uninsured patients, such as my mother. And that was how my mom got the treatment that she got. She got the surgery and medications that she needed because of that. And it really shaped me into who I am today because that was one of the reasons why I decided to pursue medicine. I wanted to one day give back to the community, help the uninsured population, help people who are in need and you can't afford health care like my mother back then. And that's why I am a PA today, working in an underserved population. I know that it must have been very hard, especially for you and your family to immigrate over here and you know, without anything, you've really built yourself up into a professional and successful career. Um, so, you know, now that you're working as a PA, can you tell us a little bit more about what your day consists of? Yeah, definitely. So before the pandemic hit, my day was completely different. Now our focus is seeing the population with COVID symptoms. So right now, before I would have maybe 20, 30 patients a day coming in with different complaints, but now every morning I would go into clinic and there are 30, 40 patients lined up in front of our doors and sometimes we can't see everyone. Right now we are seeing somewhere from 40 to 50 patients a day. But, but we don't have enough testing, unfortunately, to test everyone. And so, unfortunately, we do have to turn patients away when we run out of tests, and that's very sad. We try to see everyone, and it's very sad to see how patients are suffering because of the pandemic and because of COVID. That must be a lot of stress. Um, so with that, how does that play into your mental health, and how are you recuperating after a day's you know, load of work? Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. With this whole pandemic, I think it's really taken a big toll on my mental health, personally, just because of many reasons. So the, the two main ones are, I value patient provider contact and relationship a lot. And oftentimes when I see my patients, I, I'm very expressive and I show you know, sympathy to them. I comfort them through you know words and facial expressions and my body language. But now, dressed in full PPE with my gown, with my face shield, with my double mask, all you can see is like, you know, these robots basically just walking around. And, you know, only my eyes are showing. And so it's really hard to kind of come off and, and comfort them with just, it just kind of gives a barrier between our relationship, you know, the patient and provider relationship. And it's really sad. Um, another thing is that I am very close to my mom. I'm close to my whole family, but especially with my mom. And during hard times, I do find comfort in talking to my mom or being with my mom. I usually see her like every two to three months, but ever since the pandemic, I haven't seen her for half a year. And oh, wow. so it's been really hard on me on that part. Um, yes, you know, I FaceTime her. I call her almost every day, um, but it's still hard not to have that physical contact with those who you care about. And I hope that anyone who needs any mental support to reach out to their family or their friends you know, and gain that support that they need. Because like I said, sometimes acknowledging that you are suffering mentally is a sign of strength and not so much weakness. Mm -hmm. Hang in there. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time today, V. I'm very, you know, happy that, you know, with your story, other people will find hope and also positivity, uh, especially during the situation. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was so great to meet you.